Fondly known as the Weeping Philosopher or the Riddler, this presentation introduces ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus. A look into his early life. Heraclitus was born in 535 BC in Ephesus, a city in Ionia located in the Asia Minor of what is modern day known as Ephes, Turkey. Heraclitus was the son of Heracon, a descendant of Androclus, the founder of a great Ionian dynasty of that period which ruled the region. Since childhood, he bore mournful demeanor and would be seen brooding alone in corners of his parental home or temples. Heraclitus was awarded the title as a noble in Ephesus but declined it. He was also made one of the rulers of the region but abdicated in favor of his brother since he found politics and governance frivolous. Heraclitus was described as both a misanthrope and melancholic. He had a deep contempt for Pythagoras, Hesiod and Homer and spared no effort to reveal them publicly. He described people, especially his fellow Ephesians, as a bunch of greedy eunuchs who deserved the harshest punishment for amassing wealth they possibly could never use during their lifetime. He held laws in low esteem and criticized them with alacrity. Heraclitus suffered from severe clinical depression or what is known as melancholia. His facial expressions were of one in deep mental anguish and hence earned the name the mournful thinker or weeping philosopher. Several artists in their portraits and depictions of Heraclitus portray him as a sad and brooding figure, mostly clad in black robes. According to historian Diogenes Laertes, he was afflicted with edema, a disease that causes fluids to accumulate either in specific parts or all over the body. A look into his works. Heraclitus is credited with writing a single manuscript about his thoughts, which was stored at the Temple of Artemis. From whatever fragments that survive, later thinkers and chroniclers try to piece together Heraclitus' teachings. It has been suggested that his statements are symbolic of the nature of the world and the process he writes about. Heraclitus has a very poetic style of using language, rhetoric effects, puns, riddles, syntactical and semantic ambiguities and metaphors are characteristics of his style. Heraclitus is infamous for both his Doctrine of Flux and Doctrine of Opposites. The Doctrine of Flux For Heraclitus, the world is a theatre of opposites, and these opposites are always in continual tension in the constitution of things. They try to change into each other. He uses the river as a metaphor for a world in a process of continual change, where he notes, You cannot step into the same river twice. Into the same river we step and do not step. We are and we are not. If something is now, it won't be later nothing is. It seems for him that the unchanging nature of things is permanent. Heraclitus' doctrine of opposites regards that when change occurs it looks like the identity of the changing or moving object is preserved, in the sense that it can be identified as the same object persisting over time and through some qualities. While things may be changing in some respect at all time, it would not seem immediately true to say that they were changing in all respect at every moment in time. Aristotle rejects this conceptualization. He believes it is impossible for contraries to belong to the same thing at the same time. However, Heraclitus says, Opposites, even if they are in contraries, can replace each other or transform from one to another, or may even be simultaneously present. He says we perceive night and day, hot and cold, dry and wet, and at moral levels we are also good and bad. To deny the existence of opposites in the world as we know it is to deny the existence of the world itself. Where there is existence, opposites exist. Logos in Greek translates to reason. For Heraclitus, Logos is the hidden structure or formula of all things which lies behind the flux of appearances. Though men are physically present in the world, not all of them are connected with it. They are absent though present, inexperienced though experiencing. Understanding for Heraclitus is a kind of mindfulness, an insight into the nature of things which grasps our positions and change in the phenomenal world as well as the unity which lies behind them. Unity of things its not simply that they are changing. For Heraclitus, the world itself consists of a law-like interchange of elements symbolized by fire, in which he perceives that fire is the most predominant in the cycle of elemental transformations. He notes that fire changes into water and then into earth, earth changes into water and then into fire. Lessons and Contributions Heraclitus counters Pythagoras in his views about equilibrium, not because he didn't believe in the harmony and balance of things, but because he thought balance came from a tension between opposing forces. For example, a single substance may be perceived in various ways. While seawater is harmful for humans to drink, it's beneficial for fishes to survive. His understanding of the relations of opposites to each other enabled him to overcome the chaotic and divergent nature of the world. Between all things there is a hidden connection, so that those that are apparently tending apart are actually being brought together. Heraclitus appreciated the dynamic nature of environments moving equilibrium and the importance of appreciating contradictions when trying to analyze the world.